WTF, after a very volatile week, are the Bulls back because we're closing near the high of the week? Not only that, we left a huge hole on the chart or a massive gap. What's even more impressive is that on the weekly chart, we have back-to-back -back green weeks or two weeks in a row, and we actually closed over last week's high. Hey, this looks a little bit constructive. Yes, it does. It basically looks like we came down to our all-time high and we're getting a bounce. And by closing over last week's high, it shows momentum. If we look at S&P, pretty much the same thing. Green week last week, green week this week, and we're closing over last week's high. So stocks had a pretty good week, even if they're mixed, because mega caps were the big guys. They did okay. Apple, less bad than feared. NVIDIA did okay. Amazon's up, and Tesla's even up. So maybe Jerome Powell is having the last laugh. Remember, Sometimes the Fed chair will often get key economic data before their Fed meeting. And it looks like he probably got this print because, wow, this came in super good. It was exactly what he wanted. The actual means that we got less jobs added, unemployment went up, people are making less money, and that's good, right? Let's read these headlines now. So traders pull forward first rate cut to September from November. Perfect. It's a Goldilocks report that will please the Fed and markets, Mohammed El Arian says. All right, and then the last one here. This is the lowest annual gain for average hourly earnings since June of 2021. Oh my goodness, Jerome Powell seems like he did it. He's the best banker ever, and even I am impressed. So again, oftentimes they will see this data, if there's a Fed decision and it's on a Friday, they get it earlier. It looks like he probably had this data. And the reason why I find this really interesting is because We've been tracking this Bitcoin versus BTC pattern, losing the 50, rejecting on the 50, but this is where things got a little bit funky. We're now actually back above the downtrend, but we didn't close over that 50 MA. So the puzzle's not completely clear. And what, we are, what we're looking for here is the same thing as before. Can the S&P make it to its target along with the NASDAQ, or do we hit those stops? So far, we're getting key resistance right on that 50 DMA. So going into next week, this is going to really matter. Why? Well, because I don't know if this is support or resistance. At least for right now, we hit it, backed off, and we're trying to gather up steam. Same thing happened here on the NASDAQ. Now I'm going to play you a quick clip because I want you to listen to what these guys had to say on Wednesday before uh, we saw this data that came out on Friday and just listen to what they had to say because I think you're going to be pretty impressed. All right, let's go. This one. As Michael McKee was reading through the commentary. I thought, boy, this is really good for the markets because here is a Fed that's telling us, look at the longer term. Look where inflation was and look where we've gotten it to. Don't worry about the last couple of months. We'll see what happens there. I actually think that's the right message. I don't believe the law of long and variable lags has been repealed. I think they've been delayed because of all the f fiscal stimulus that's still in the pipeline, but they're still there. You are seeing some pressures on the economy. Like Mohammed, the only thing I was surprised about is that they characterize the economy as still solid. Yeah, I, I look, Mohammed, I want to bring this up. I brought it up earlier with Bob Mike. I'm going to do it with you right now. I don't know where you were in 1995, maybe at the White House, Mohammed, maybe IMF. But the answer is Bob Michael says there's whispers here of 1995. The stock market was a moonshot off of the success of 1995. <clears throat> is that what we are prepared for here, that they may get this right? We may have a constructive 1995 and up we go? So where I agree with Bob without any qualifications is that this particular statement is something that the markets will like. It's exactly what the market wanted. Um, as to are we going... All right, I think that's enough of this video. So what they're basically saying is that, is it 1995 or are we going to get a mega rally? And they basically said the same thing that we're seeing here in these, uh, in these quotes. It's a Goldilocks report. And this is on Friday. That same guy who we just heard speak, Mohammed El Arian, I respect him. They pretty much said that uh, this is a bit of a surprise. The Fed's doing a good job. Just before we go further, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. Bob Michael from JP Morgan did say that Jerome Powell characterized the economy as strong. And he might have seen this number too, because the GDP for the second quarter is here at 3.3%. So again, I think, I think that what Jerome did 
was he saw the data from Friday, and on Wednesday, he towed that line. A little bit of hawkishness, a little bit of dovishness, but the net effect here is that the market's happy. They're pulling the rate cut forward to September. It's a Goldilocks report. The market and the Fed will both like it. And this is where I'm getting confused, like I said, because this pattern was playing out. Uh, lose of the 50, reject on the 50, and then the consolidation period where we actually went down to a monthly lower low here. It actually printed a lower low. We've not done that on the S&P. What did we do? We're breaking the pattern. We're over the downtrend, but not over the 50. So things are getting complicated because this pattern here says that we have to make it to the target or to the stop. I'm trying to tell you a simple story because things are getting funky out there. So what should happen is that if the bulls are in control, we should be able to make it to roughly 520. We're probably going to back test, which would mean a retest of that 50. And we, we would find out whether or not that is support or if it's still resistance. The same thing for the, for the NASDAQ here. Over the 50, back test from a weekly higher low. And then if we're bullish, we claim it and we go higher. Honestly, I wish I could tell you exactly where we're going to go. What I'm doing right now is making my best guess because a lot of incoming data changed. And the reason why this also matters is because next week is going to be a very light data week. So I believe that what will really matter is going to be the key technicals, meaning are we going to go higher or are we going to go lower? And as of right now, we're not really seeing that fear and greed is moving higher to justify the percent move that we got. The S&P is up by 1.2%. The Nasdaq's up by 2%. Dollar got crushed and VIX is down 8%, down to 13. And the 10-year note is down by 1.5%. So something's not quite adding up. I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm going to have to do a bit more research on the weekend. And speculators remain net long. These guys are usually wrong, but at least for now, they're right. And this pretty much comes down to whether or not we're going to get that dip into the summer. We have to form a monthly higher high to do that. I'll review those charts tomorrow. But another quick thing I want to show you here is after uh, stocks are likely red in April, ending a five-month win streak. What usually happens after? Well, we go almost nowhere on average or median after one month. That would give credence to this one here where we start to go sideways. And then three, six, 12 months out, we're higher, higher, higher. So, hey, maybe it is 1995. Maybe we are going to go higher. What I'm trying to do is to be mindful that I don't know exactly where we're going to go. I felt more confident going into this week than I do right now. So if we're going to reverse our dip recipe, we need to reverse all of these things, starting off with number four or reclaiming that 50-day 50 50 day moving average. I just showed you what that would mean here, getting to the target, back testing the 50, and then breaking over. If we get that, it means we're likely to stop going down. We're below the downtrend. We have to start getting full uh, hollow candles. We got those. And then we got to start going up. All right, that's it for today's video. Watch the video on the left or subscribe on the right and come hang out with us on our next video. Thank you so much.